from Ryan. Uh, I'd say Matt, I slightly misled you on the topic. Oh, really? Thing, but anyway, I mean, come on. Yes, the, the boozy jacuzzi <laughs> bit works anyway. Father Sam, the Holy Collective. My confession goes back to the winter of 2015 when both myself and my wife, Babs, were enjoying some Bridget Jones type skiing in the mountains of, of Austria. Not quite sure. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. What's Bridget Jones type skiing? She, she didn't do very well when she went skiing in the film. Oh, right, oh, okay. okay. Right. So they're just a bit... They're, they're not great. Okay. It must be said that we're not in our first flush of youth, we're both in our mid-50s, which, I have to say, sounds pretty young to me. At the end of each day of hard graft, says Ryan, getting our slope legs, we used to retire to the hotel spa for some well-earned relaxation. PG certificate? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if many of your <laughs> listeners know this, but most, if not all, of the hotels in Austria operate a strictly no-swimming-costume policy in the wet areas of their spas. What? <laughs> a no-swimming-costume policy in the wet areas of I'm their spas. I'm assuming that means no nothing at all, then. Nothing yes, at all. Yes, that's right. Right, OK. That's right. Essentially, costumes were obligatory in both the swimming pool and the jacuzzi, but not in the sauna and the steam room. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, both myself and my wife are liberal thinking people. Yes. We go to the theatre, we shop at Waitrose, <laughs> and we eat hummus. <laughs> so we both thought, well, when in Rome. Anyway, on the first evening, we made our way down to the spa area to be greeted by a crowd of beautiful naked Danish people who were certainly enjoying themselves a hopping and a skipping, naked from the damp bad, the sauna, to the jacuzzi. Maybe this spa had a no costume rule for the jacuzzi too, we thought. We were slightly hesitant as we removed our clothes, but decided to take the plunge and join them au naturel in the jacuzzi. Well, we were all sat in the rather snug jacuzzi, entertaining small talk, when suddenly the whole beautiful Danish group got up and left, and they appeared to be wearing their costumes. It may have been something we said or the startled look on our faces when my wife spotted and signalled to me the sign, costumes must be worn at all times in the jacuzzi. OK. <laughs> we were unfortunately naked. <laughs> After the Danish group's swift exit, we suddenly found ourselves alone in the hot bubbling water trying to work out a strategy to exit the jacuzzi quickly before anyone else spotted our faux pas or anything else. Come to yeah. think of it. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's proper Austrian, that is. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> imagine, imagine our horror when the door to the spa opened and we were joined in the jacuzzi by six burly British guys all wearing their speedos and carrying cans of lager oh, the local Trappist Ale 7.4% <laughs> luckily the bubbles were covering a multitude oh, of sins dear. we realised that they were in for the long haul and we were stuck they were wearing their cosies. We were naked in the jacuzzi. What's more, we were booked for dinner in five minutes. My wife decided she'd had enough of this and decided to take evasive action. And without warning, she shouted, Avert your eyes, gentlemen! <laughs> She then arose from the bubbles like a phoenix from the ashes and climbed hurriedly over several pairs of hairy legs to reach the safety of her towel hung discreetly over a chair near the exit. I quickly followed, much to the amusement of everyone else left in the jacuzzi, and fled naked to the changing room, keeping what dignity I had by putting on a pair of spa slippers. <laughs> Don't think that works, Ryan. Because I'd forgotten to yeah. bring my towel and didn't want to risk oh. any more exposure trying to find my discarded trunks. It's even more embarrassing to report as the British guys ended up always sitting near us at dinner for the rest of the holiday. We always smiled politely at them as we passed, but they looked a bit baffled. Either they didn't recognise us with our clothes on, or the Engelspell Trappistein beer was working its magic. So clearly I seek forgiveness not just from the burly British guys, who are probably still traumatised from their experience, avert your eyes, gentlemen, <laughs> but also from the hotel management for a flagrant disregard of the hotel rules. It's always slightly troubling when you go to foreign climes and discover that there are rules like this in the uh -huh. sauna. Can't be doing with it. Anyway, what do you say, Sister Susie, uh, producer of the programme from the pub? 
Well, Ryan, I, th- well, I think Babs comes off a bit better than you um, than you do. I don't know what, what you did with those slippers and, you know, where you use them to hide your dignity, but I, thought, I think the less about that, the better. Um, however, I, it, you know, it, you were following the example of the beautiful Danish people and maybe you were a bit mislaid there that they actually had put their pants on before they'd got in the jacuzzi. So I don't think it was your fault at all. And, you know, you're liberal. You eat hummus. So I'm yes. going to forgive you. <laughs> yeah. Um, the sign of the liberal, the hummus and the naked in the jacuzzi. Uh, Brother Matthew. Um, I, I, I've i never really quite understood this uh, obsession our continental cousins have with everything has to come off if you're going into the sauna or the or, or any other part. And, and that you've got to wear the smallest costume possible when you go in swimming in France. That's happened to me. Absolute disgrace. Uh, we were unfortunately naked. There's a line that uh, that is always guaranteed to mean yes. that I'm going to forgive. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, what a what a, a killer confession to start the week with. Uh, definitely forgiven. <laughs>